All right, well, in the other church, Jake Huger, John Idolo with you guys today. Um, we will drop it in the second hour, don't worry, okay? <laughs> but uh, for now, me and John right now uh, on the show. Look, a uh, big day ahead, tons of stories. Uh, Roger Stone, not just versus Jared Kushner, John, but perhaps against Donald Trump. <gasps> oh, pardon alone. him. Let alone the abortionist <laughs> B word, which we'll get to and actually say in a minute. Uh, he all is right. the worst. Yes, and so there's tons of news stories, and of course today's food for thought trivia. So if you're a member, well, actually, you could be a member, become a member today and still win it. A hundred members are going to get a hundred dollars free in uh, a Blue Apron gift cards. So uh, sign up today, tyt.com/slash/join. All right, John, let's do it. Okay, we've got so much to talk about. Let's jump right into it. <clears throat> If you've been wondering how Donald Trump is reacting to the January 6th committee voting unanimously to subpoena him, not well. He sent a 14 page letter that he totally wrote himself to Benny Thompson, the chair of that committee. It has a headline, as letters always do The presidential election of 2020 was rigged and stolen. <laughs> so he hasn't learned much of a lesson, presumably, from all of this. Um, anyway, he goes on to say so many different things, and we're not going to cover all of them. He talks about the impeachment hoaxes of the radical left Democrats and all of that stuff. Um, but he goes on to say, this memo is being written to express our anger, disappointment, and complaint that with all of the hundreds of millions of dollars spent on what many consider to be a capital C charade and capital W witch hunt, and despite strong and powerful requests, What does that even mean? You have not spent even a short moment on examining the massive election fraud that took place during the 2020 presidential election and have targeted only those who were as concerned American citizens protesting the fraud itself. Who the hour is that begins that paragraph, I have no idea. And that is only the first of many times that Donald Trump speaks out in support of the people who he has previously been forced to condemn that stormed the Capitol and tried to murder people and overthrow democracy and all that. He's back on their side, he's back in defense of them. In it, he rehashed many of the same claims that he's been making since January 6th or even since November 2020. He claimed that he had authorized thousands of National Guard troops to defend the Capitol, a claim that his own former acting defense secretary refuted in testimony to the committee. He just keeps saying it despite that. He says that the elections in Georgia, Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania were all dubious because of reports of irregularities or suspicion about movement of ballots. Every single one was, of course, stolen. He specifically says that black Democrats in urban areas stole the election from him. That's how it happened, basically. He did a state by state breakdown of all of this evidence. You can either read that in his letter or watch whatever videos Mike Lindell has put out recently. It's all the same stuff. And he went on to say that apparently one of his biggest grievances was that the hearings weren't interesting enough. And so they were very poorly rated. The unselect committee was. It got very poor ratings during their show trial. Look, the ratings of the hearings are like the least important thing that has ever happened. But let's also keep it real, the ratings were good. I, like I, the, the MSNBC was winning in their time slot. It doesn't matter, nobody should care about that. But I feel the need to correct the record on that. So anyway, I, I don't know, Jake. <laughs> okay. So first, uh, it should be noted that it is an amazing irony that the right wing that claims to love alpha males has chosen a leader that is the weakest person in America. That is just a nonstop crybaby. Like you just poke him a tiny bit and he'll cry. It's like you could make a doll out of it. Oh my God, shoptyt.com, that's an idea, okay? We're gonna look into you making Trump doll. You press the, the soft, soft belly, <laughs> right? Now look, I, I'll give you an example that I think will clarify it for you. So, you know, we've talked about, you, we like Bernie Sanders, right? We criticize him when it makes sense, etc. But obviously, he's fine. He's fine. Overall, he's he's the top progressive in the country among politicians, right? Okay, good. So now, and Bernie also actually had a not also actually had something rigged against him. That was a 2016 DNC, uh, the primaries, right? Now, guys, when I say that, I don't mean the votes, right? And so that'll piss off some super old school libs and stuff. Oh no, it was the votes? Okay, whatever, right? You've never presented. Uh, good evidence on that. 
But did they rig it in terms of they funneled money to Hillary Clinton through the states? Absolutely, that's no question. It's basically a form of political money laundering. Did they rig it in less debates at the worst times, etc.? No question. Super delegates. So, yeah, the super delegates. All of those things were structurally meant to help Hillary Clinton, who they said was invincible. Then why did you have to rig all the rules to help her? Okay, anyway, so now all that did happen, and we did cover it, and we did prove it, unlike Trump, who lost 62 court cases, presented zero evidence. But imagine for a second if Bernie was still talking about it. Ugh. And and he was using this kind of language. The UnDNC did the witch hunt against me. We're like, Bernie, focus, focus. <laughs> like we're, we're trying to get minimum wage passed, we're trying to get this passed and that passed. And if at every time you talk to Bernie, he was like, I'll tell you what, they rigged it against me. The witch hunt people, you know, I had a very strong candidacy, <laughs> but they robbed me. We'd be like, what a weirdo. And we would immediately ditch him. You could say, oh, yeah, right. No, you wouldn't. Oh, yeah, we just ditched Tulsi. Tulsi was one of the strongest advocates for Bernie and for progressives in 2016. The minute she turned around and was like, oh, I think the right wing kind of rocks, right? And she did it apparently subtle enough that some weirdo leftists are still clinging on to her skirt, right? Like, oh, yeah, Tulsi, she's the one, right? No, us, we're like, yeah. No, she's wrong, gone, right? But the Republicans never do that, never, right? Trump's like, I'm gonna deliver for you guys, I'm gonna get you more jobs, higher wages, I'm gonna get you everything, I'm gonna get you health care. Remember how he used to talk about expanding health care? He didn't do any of it, none of it. The only thing he did was tax cuts for the rich. And the right wingers are like, oh, he took my money and gave it to the rich, like himself? Okay, okay, good, good, okay. Oh, he's still crying about the elections. I love people who are so weak they can't keep crying forever and ever. That's my favorite. Little weak, you know what? Okay. I know. <laughs> I think I know. Okay. So, all right. So that's Trump. But um, of course, my favorite part of the story is what we're about to get to, which is Trump might testify. Mm. Ooh, come, come, please, 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 uh, but, come and find out. But John, to answer your question, uh, why does he say things like strong and powerful requests, right? One, because he's a moron. Again, if anyone on our side talked like that, mm -hmm. I made a request, but it was strong and powerful. And we'd be like, okay, weirdo, let's get someone else, yeah. right? The reason he says it because the request sounds weak. So he wants to say, well, I requested, but like not like a weekly. Yeah. I requested it with strength and power. Yeah. Child, child, well, idiotic and that's child. And that's why even like the most basic like beginning creative writers learn that you don't you don't add more adjectives, you use stronger verbs. It's a demand. That's the strong word, not a powerful request. It's a demand. Okay. He, he the English said, language is fascinating. You should look into it. He should definitely look into it. He claims he has. You remember when they had one time he claimed <laughs> the he, best he, words. He, no, no, not only that. <laughs> he said that he invented the word fake. Yeah, it's still right wing. Like, oh, I bet that's true, man. Yeah, yeah. no, no, that didn't. That wasn't in the English yeah. language my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, we're gonna turn to the testifying in a sec. But first, you made claims about him being weak, which is obviously ridiculous. Uh, it takes a true alpha to uh, use part of their 14-page whiny letter to include literal photos of the crowd. If we could go to graphic six. So the January 6th committee is making the case. That you sent a bunch of people from your rally to go attack the Capitol, and you respond to that by saying, "Look how many people I told to attack the Capitol." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I guess that at least I think those are authentic photos, which means that we have evolved, okay? Because he's actually showing real photos of the crowds he's drawn. But I don't see how that makes things better for him. My writers and insurrectionists were uh, strong and powerful. Did I accidentally just admit I'm guilty? <laughs> yeah, oops. you kind of did. Oops. <laughs> Capital O, oops. Okay, let's turn now to potentially more important stuff. The question now is, will Donald Trump actually come in? January 6th committee apparently wants him to. 
Is he gonna do it? Well, he has publicly attacked the committee, okay? But he has been telling aides privately that he favors testifying before the panel as long as he gets to do so live. Now, the lawmakers have rejected similar demands from other witnesses, but pre preliminary discussions among the panel members indicated more openness to a live interview with Mr. Trump, which is, that is fascinating. Because obviously, doing it or not is one thing. Doing it live or not is potentially even more important. A Trump advisor apparently told the Daily Beast on Thursday evening that he should not. We don't know who that advisor is. I assume his legal team is desperately trying to get him to not do that. But we know who Donald Trump is and we know he loves talking to a camera. We know he loves lying about the election. This is a great opportunity to do both of those things before a lot of people. So what do you think at this point? You think he's gonna do it? Well, look, um, first I wanna address his supporters. Uh, do you think he's really smart and really right on this issue? Or do you think he's a dumbass and totally guilty? Because that should determine logically whether you want him to testify or not. Look, I've testified before, and when they asked me to testify, since I was right, I wasn't like, oh, no, I don't want to testify. No, I went and testified happily, and I did great, right? Because I was right. So, what is it, guys? What do you want? Like, if you really believed it, again, let's say Bernie was asked to testify, are you really in favor of higher wages? Yeah, great, let's go, <laughs> are you kidding me on national TV? Great, let's do that immediately, right? But you know what you're thinking, MAGA. You're thinking, don't, don't go, don't go. They'll say things like, it's a, it's a perjury trap. Not unless you intend to lie. Well, hold on, are you, <laughs> when you say MAGA there, are you talking about his legal team advisors and maybe Fox News hosts? Are you talking about regular MAGA No, people? no, no, I'm talking about regular MAGA. Because I bet they want to see him testify more than anything yeah, in the world. Come on, push him to do it. Because all of his advisors and all the Fox News hosts already know he's a dumbass, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they have been lying to their audience the entire time. If you ask Tucker Carlson his real opinion, should Trump testify? He would tackle him to have him not testify. <laughs> no, when you corner Tucker, he lies. He's already told us that. <laughs> yeah. So of course not. Look guys, MAGA guys, you don't get it. All of your leaders already know what you don't know. Trump is one of the dumbest guys in politics. Mm -hmm. And he is a pathological liar. Why do they know it a little bit better than you do? Even though, come on guys, how long is it gonna take you to figure it out, right? Because they deal with him every day on a personal level. So he'll be like, get me a Diet Coke. And you get him a Diet Coke, I didn't ask for that. You're like, <laughs> he can't help himself. That's why we call it pathological, right? Yeah. So if he went to go testify, minimum every other sentence would be a perjury charge, yep. right? He lies nonstop, right? So of course, all of his advisors are like, no, whatever you do, do not testify under oath. By the way, I mean, you see, we'll talk more about it later in the show with Roger Stone. But they all are like, oh my God, the Democrats are gonna get us. And they're gonna, if we are lie under oath, they're gonna put us in prison. Oh, for January 6th, he wanted to pardon because they were gonna put, have you guys met the Democrats? <laughs> the Democrats have still not gotten Trump under oath once. Yeah. None of the prosecutors in the country, for all the laws that he's ever broken, have ever gotten him under to oath once. If all you gotta do is get him under oath, he just sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. He'll give you hours and hours of lies, because he can't help himself. But MAGA guys, you think I'm wrong. Oh, He's the most honest guy I've ever seen. Great, great, then encourage him. Send him notes, he'll love it. Oh, great Lion King. He's, you know, did the King of the Lion video the other day. <laughs> oh, the jackals are nipping at your heels. Go crush the jackals. Live TV, okay. Testify. Show them what you got. You're so right. Okay, I would yeah. love to see that. I would By the way, to. John, don't get me wrong. It's not impossible for the Democrats to blow. Like, oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, like Trump could testify and they'd be like, eh, I didn't do it, right? And you're like, no. Oh my God. He just God, talks for three hours more. straight and they don't <laughs> interrupt him. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, Raskin's on there. Yeah, Raskin. And, and Liz Cheney's on there, so they probably won't blow it completely. Yeah, yeah, one would hope so. Uh, I still love that the, the, they invoked the perjury trap. Like they, they so knew that he could not help but lie that they came up with a concept where him lying proves the other side is bad. Anyway, um, okay, so I have, I have another thought about what might happen if he does testify. But the theme of this block is about how he's feeling. And one way that we can uh, infer how he's feeling is uh, how much he's bleeding on Truth Social. So here is a video showing his posts from a one hour period on Truth Social. Take a look. 
baking soda. Baking soda, the thing that you're supposed to inject into your lungs. <laughs> I don't know. Is that There's what you so much. There's South Post, NBC, Mother Jones. I think that was CNBC, unselect committee stuff. I think there's some grifting. Literally, <laughs> that is a one hour period. Go talk to your kids. <laughs> you have kids, you have businesses. What are you doing? Does he? Does he? Does he really have kids that he cares about? Does he have businesses that are bankrupt? That is one hour. <laughs> you know, I often, I will hear about what someone annoying on Twitter has done or whatever. And I'll go to their Twitter account to find it. And very often, have you ever scrolled through the Twitter page of very online people? It you can't find anything because in one day they'll tweet 300 times or something. Yeah. I'm not gonna name names because then they'll start tweeting 300 times about me. But you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, you're 100% right. You sit him down, he's gonna lie. But I think more importantly than him lying, I'm not good with old movies, but A Few Good Men is the mm -hmm. one with Tom Cruise, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. the big trial scene at the end where the general or whatever admits what he did because he got pressured. And that always sort of bothered me because, come on, why are you gonna do that? That's like a professional guy. Why are you gonna make, but Trump does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris yeah. Matthews pressured him on abortion and got him to say, yes, we should punish the women. And Lester Holt pressured him a little bit and he admitted, I fired Comey over Russia. Like, <laughs> all you have to do is make it so he feels like, well, I don't want to admit that I broke the law, but like now that seems like the strong thing to do. They could easily get him to admit that he wanted violence, easily get him to admit that he wanted Mike Pence to die. He, like he will definitely lie and that is damaging. But him telling the truth could be way more damaging and he will do it so readily. That's a brilliant point. Uh, so here, here's how I get him to do it instantly. Um, uh, you know, the CIA pulled off a coup against <laughs> Mohammed Mossadegh in 1953 in Iran. It was the best coup ever planned. Oh, no way, I planned a better coup. Oh yeah, why didn't you do it? January 6, 2021. <laughs> he would like he wouldn't even blink. He wouldn't even blink. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> anyway, um, we're gonna have to see. They're drafting it. We don't know how long it's gonna take for him to respond. And even if he does respond, do you, really fast, do you think that they would try to fit this in before the midterms? I mean, they clearly, like keeping it real, they want this whole process to affect the midterms. No, no, this is all a fun conversation, but here's how it's gonna go down. Uh, his advisors are going to tackle him. They're gonna put him in the storage closet where he kept <laughs> the secret documents, okay? Because there's no way that they could allow Trump to testify. That's just that's that's just political suicide, right? So they never so he's gonna his lawyers are gonna challenge it, it's gonna drag out, they're gonna assume the Republicans are winning the House, and then, and then they'll quash it. Yeah, that's but even if the Republicans don't win the House, he's not gonna testify. There's no way. Like if he did, it would be spectacular, and and MAGA may again. Maybe you guys are right. Maybe yeah. he'll maybe he'll tell the truth and show that it was actually the, the, the Biden rigged the elections, and those riders were actually tourists, Antifa tourists. There were mules. Yeah, mule Antifa tourists. There were mules, right? Half and he could mule. prove that. I, I think you guys should give it a shot. Yeah. But but look, the chances of Democrats holding anyone in power accountable is next to nothing. Yeah. So both the Republicans and the Democrats are aligned to not actually hold Trump accountable. So the only person who could rescue uh, you know, victory from the jaws of defeat here uh, is Trump by accidentally stepping into the jaws yeah. of defeat. Right? Which, which if you're watching Trump, stepping into the jaws of defeat would be a very strong thing to do. Oh, no way, a very, John. A very big alpha boy would do that. No, no, <laughs> Hillary is the best at stepping into the jaws of defeat. There's no way that so Trump far. could do it as well. There's no way. <laughs> oh, yes, someone in Mar-a-Lago, I just heard it. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna take our first break. Mm -hmm. When we come back, there's a lot more, don't go anywhere. All right, back on TYT, Jenk and John with you guys, go. I, okay, I will. In this, in this last January 6th committee hearing, uh, there was a, a little bit of a repetition of some of what had been covered earlier. The, the committee wanted to make sure that everyone understood where we've come from. 
And on the right, their response also kind of reiterated what they've been saying from the very beginning, but it's no more accurate, no more honest, no more true than it was when they first made the claims. Let's explain first, here they are. Was Speaker Pelosi involved in the decision to delay National Guard assistance on January 6th? Those are serious and real questions that this committee committee refuses to even ask. Jim Banks just raised some very serious questions that should be answered by the January 6th commission, but they're not. So Jim Banks raised some very, very serious questions, Steve Scalise says. And he wants to know why didn't Nancy Pelosi, why didn't the Democrats try to call in somebody to deal with the chaos of January 6th? If only there was some way for us to know why they didn't do that, to know what they were thinking about, what they were saying. If only Steve Scalise could have been in a position to know that, which we now find out he 100% was. Take a look at this. This cannot be just we're waiting for so and so. We need them there now, whoever you got. You have, okay. you also have troops. This is Stunny Hoyer. Troops. Okay, okay so we have a Fort little bit of time Air, to make that decision. Andrews Air Force Base. All right. Other military bases. Thank you. We Thanks, need Paul. active Bye. duty National Guard. How soon in the future can you have the place evacuated, cold, you know, cleaned out? Uh, I don't want to speak for the so yes, Mitch McConnell was there. You saw the woman in the black and white design on her coat. She moved to the side so Steve Scalise could be a part of the conversation. He was there. He knows exactly what they requested. The urgency in their voices, they're saying, you gotta get us National Guard. I forget exactly who the, the other gentleman was. He was saying, here are the nearby places, go to there, find people, send them over. Nancy Pelosi is like, yes, we have. there's a lot to figure out. We can figure it out while the troops are headed here. Steve Scalise was listening to every second of that. And every minute since then, he's been lying about his knowledge of what actually happened. It's pathetic. Yeah, I am not 1% surprised by this. And look, I assume if a Republican politician is talking, a Republican politician is lying. Uh, to be fair, the Republicans, tons and tons of Democratic politicians are also liars. And I assume that as well. Uh, we would love higher wages. Oh, we're voting on it? No. Okay, <laughs> so that happens and we point it out every time. But with the Republicans now, it's it's a rebuttable presumption. Like, I'm being dead serious. Like, if there's a Republican politician on TV, I'm assuming that it's a lie, 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 lie. And if they say something true, I'm like, whoa, like take a note. That that was true. That's weird. And and now it's not just Republican politicians, you know, Republicans on social media, Republicans in real life. They won't. That's why do you think they love Donald Trump and they have him as their leader? They love liars. They don't want to know the truth. Oh, we should all be equal. They're like, oh, I don't want that, right? Now you're saying we have to teach about racism and not justice, Ugh, yeah, equity. Yeah. Uh, oh, now gay people and trans people are going to be equal to us. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody tell me being white means being equal. <laughs> okay. Trump's like, I'll do it, <laughs> right? And they're like, Yeah, that's it. So, do you think there, this, if his voters found out about Steve Scalise, now he's not Trump or anything, right? He's not untouchable. But if you told all of his voters, you showed them that exact video, so they know for a fact that he's lying, right? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't lose one vote. I don't think they would care. No, at all. they'd be like, "Oh, I don't care." Pelosi yeah. probably lied about something, okay? And uh, and it was and it was Antifa tourist National Guard anyway. Like what? That doesn't even make any sense. Like we're not trying to make sense, okay? So yeah, I mean, look, Desjardins had uh, three paid for three abortions. They voted for him over and over and over again in Tennessee. They'll vote for Herschel Walker. They vote for Trump, and he's the biggest liar we've ever had in politics. And that's saying a lot because they're almost all liars, right? So this won't affect him one percent. Mm -hmm. But yes, that was a gargantuan lie. But just think about it on a personal level for a second. So forget the politics because it's not going to affect anything in politics. 
How unbearable are these guys? Imagine if you knew somebody like this, oh. that like you had had a personal conversation in like a really traumatic moment. Somebody had broken into your house, right? And you're worried about your life and you're together, you're calling the cops and stuff. And then like a couple weeks later or a couple months later, it comes out and it says, she didn't call the cops, okay? She's the one who had the person break into the house. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, what kind of a monster is this guy? Like what's wrong with him? Is he mentally unbalanced? And you'd never talk to that person again, right? That's all every Republican. Yep. So Scalise just happened to get caught on tape. But you think Ron Johnson's telling the truth about January 6th? You think any of them are? No, they're all effing liars. And so by the way, I give the right wing credit for this from time to time. Like they sussed out that mainstream media was full of crap. And a lot of the left still believes in the mainstream media. They're like, oh, how are we gonna pay for healthcare when every other nation does it easily and at half the price? I, okay, I bet we shouldn't get a universal health care. Like Democratic voters, I love you, but wakey, wakey, mainstream media is full of crap. They're corporate propaganda, right? Right wing figured that out. But the minute you give them right wing propaganda, they're like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. huh? yeah, there we go. I like those lies. Those lies are better. Okay, yeah. No, it's still lies. Yeah, hundred percent. And look, we had you know Josh Hawley pretending like there was. Why are you guys talking about January sixth? There's nothing bad about January sixth. Meanwhile, <laughs> that's Josh Hawley. <laughs> Uh, it's nothing to worry about. Nancy Mace, like a couple weeks out from it, all of a sudden, AOC is talking about how horrifying the experience was. AOC, uh, very understandably, was worried about being murdered and/or raped by these insane people. Nancy Mace is like, "Why are you guys? Why are you saying that you were scared? Why are you lying, making yourself the victim?" Meanwhile, they have interviews of Nancy Mace right after it, talking about how terrified she was and how terrified the Republicans in the room with her were. But as soon as you know, a couple days later, they don't have to worry about it. Now, the Steve Scalise lie is maybe a little bit worse because it's so specific. It's so ridiculous. And let me make clear why this particular lie is ridiculous. And it really goes to the point of Jenk saying that that none of this actually matters. It doesn't matter to the voters. It doesn't matter to Steve Scalise. He's still gonna make this same claim. It doesn't matter that it's being debunked. But more importantly, the claim doesn't matter. And do you know why? Their evasion here is, why didn't Nancy Pelosi call the National Guard to stop something that they've spent a year and a half describing as nothing? It didn't matter. It was peaceful people walking around. It was, as Tucker Carlson says, an election fraud protest. That's it. And why didn't she call the National Guard to crush it? To crush something that wasn't a big deal. It's exactly like what we dealt with with COVID for like two years. Like what? Why is Joe Biden not doing this? Why is he letting people die? Why? Why did China let COVID in? Why did Fauci do something with a lab? What did they do? Uh, let in a virus that we don't think we should take any precautions against. The diversion is always someone else is responsible for something that we shouldn't care about. We should care that they're responsible, but we shouldn't care about the actual thing. And it doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to. It's just supposed to waste time. To get us past any any point of actual consequences, whether it's for the response to COVID, whether it's for actually leading to January sixth, this is like this is now their template. Just yeah. blame someone for the thing that we shouldn't care about. Okay, one last one. Lindsey Graham on the day of the riots was the guy who you're going to be shocked to find out panicked the most. Mm -hmm. So Holly's running like ah, 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 right. Meanwhile, Graham is yelling at the, the guards, shoot them, shoot them, okay, about Trump supporters. Shoot them in the head. Okay, shoot them in the head. And then that day he comes out and he's like, gives a speech and I, this was not right, this was not right, okay. Like a couple of weeks later, <laughs> <laughs> Lindsey Graham's like, well, look, I've, I thought about it and it turns out boots do taste delicious, especially <laughs> Trump's boots, Oh my God. Yummy for my tummy, okay? It turns out the riders were coming in so I could lick their boots. Oh, I didn't know that. That was gonna be delicious. So that's the Republican liars for you. Yeah. Assume as a matter of course. This and if by the way, you know us and you see it all the time. If we see something that they're saying that makes sense, we go, hey, look at that. That one's actually true, right? But unless we're doing that, assume that everything they're saying is lying and you'll be right. Yeah, we, we like we trip over ourselves trying to find things on like, for instance, Fox and Friends. Kill me three times a year says something reasonable. That's true. Ducey five times a year That's says something right. reasonable. That's right. We just want to give them credit. <laughs> they very rarely deserve it.
Anyway, with that said, uh, why don't we move to someone who, who has never deserved credit for literally anything. In the final months of his presidency, Donald Trump pardoned that guy, Roger Stone. Now what he pardoned him for was Roger Stone's involvement in covering up everything that happened around the 2016 election. Roger Stone lied to investigators, he intimidated witnesses, he broke the law in multiple intentional ways. And there shouldn't be any consequences for what Republicans do, so Donald Trump pardoned him. But there was actually a second set of pardons and a second topic that Roger Stone wanted to be preemptively pardoned for. That was anything that might come about as a result of what Roger Stone was doing leading up to and during January 6th. And that actually did not happen. At the same time though, he was being followed by a documentary crew. So we got to find out what he was thinking, what he was saying when he apparently found out that that second pardon was not going to be coming. Take a look. Jared Kushner has an IQ of 70. He's coming to Miami. We will eject him from Miami very quickly. He'll be leaving very quick, very quickly, very quickly. He has 100 security guards, I'll have 5,000 security guards. You wanna fight? Let's fight. You, you and your abortionist daughter. Okay, we're gonna return to the last word in that because it's actually fairly crucial. But that was the little bit that remains of the husk of Roger Stone freaking out, threatening to, I guess, kill Jared Kushner and and all of the people that surround him. I he was just talking about getting some sort of personal army to attack Jared Kushner. Now, of course, importantly, it wasn't Jared Kushner's call on whether he get the pardon. It's Donald Trump's call. And Donald Trump did actually seem to be on Roger Stone's mind in a way that you noticed. Yeah, so uh, I don't know why we bleeped it out there. We don't have to bleep out that word. He, he, about Ivanka, he said, abortionist bitch daughter, okay? Wait, daughter? I thought we were talking about Jared Kushner, in which case it would be abortionist bitch wife, right? But notice he said daughter. So now he's making a reference to Trump. Now remember, he's asking Trump for the pardon. Kushner's in charge of the process, but at the end of the day, especially for guys like Roger Stone, that big and that close to Trump, Trump makes a decision. So he's kind of furious at Kushner and Trump. So he's talking about, oh, I'll get Kushner, right? But is he also talking about getting Trump? I mean, who else is going down to Florida? Kushner lives in New York. Trump lives down in Florida, mm -hmm. right? And so What's interesting is that Roger Stone on a couple of occasions has like pinged or pushed Trump, but push Trump has never pushed him back. That is weird. That's the one guy he's never ever bullied, right? So that is curious. And look at him threatening Trump's family. If Trump cares about anyone in the world and it's not clear that he does, it would be Ivanka, mm -hmm. right? And he's calling her your abortionist bitch daughter. And not a peep out of Trump. I mean, you saw the earlier in the show, we showed you his true social account. He's got like 200 messages an hour that he's tweeting out there, right? But nothing about Roger Stone calling your beloved Ivanka a bitch. Oh my God, mm -hmm. Donald Trump's a little bit like Ted Cruz. Mm. Remember when Trump called Cruz's wife ugly and then Cruz was like, okay, sir, of course, sir. Now Roger Stone calls Donald Trump's daughter a bitch. And Trump's like, okay, sir, thank you, sir. May I have another, sir? Yeah. Oh, whatever Roger Stone has on Donald Trump, it is thermonuclear. Yeah. Yeah. And I look, obviously, I don't know that that Trump is necessarily watching this, but like this is a moment where you get to decide: Are you going to kind of be the alpha they pretend that you are? Are you going to be weak as hell? I mean, I'm not going to be specific. No spoilers or anything. But recently in House of the Dragon, a king who's generally thought of as fairly weak. When someone called his daughter a name, he was ready to knife that person. But you don't have a problem with him calling her not only a bitch, but also weirdly bringing up her position on abortion. Which also says so much about Roger Stone. Why was that the thing that you thought of? And wait, John, weird. there's a second thing about the, there's just three words there, but they're all rich, okay? Mm -hmm. Abortionist, 
doesn't necessarily mean someone who supports abortion. Mm -hmm. It more accurately means someone who had an abortion. She's not abortion supporting, she's an abortionist. That's true. Okay, it's so, so I don't know, I don't know that. I'm not the one who said it. How Roger Stone, know? very close to Donald Trump said, well, what else does he know? Remember, Roger yeah. Stone has some sort of weirdo mind lock on all these idiots, right? Mm -hmm. And and I call them idiots all the time, except there's a couple of people I never call idiots, Tucker Carlson, Roger Stone, and a couple others, right? Because they're not idiots. So Roger Stone somehow does this Jedi mind lock on him. Remember Alex Jones, we found out through the trial. In fact, we found out on this show when the lawyer that was against him told Anna the story, texted a naked picture of his own wife to the biggest hatchet man in American political history, Roger Stone. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Are you insane? But yet he did it. So what has Trump told Roger Stone? What has Trump texted Roger Stone? That Roger Stone feels perfectly comfortable on camera, just like dismissively slapping around, not just Kushner and Ivanka, but Donald Trump. Yeah. I guess we know who the real alpha is. Mm -hmm. Now that's a fact. So if Trump doesn't say anything about it, you know he's a beta. Jeez. Anyway, uh, that's just the latest in you know, several of the videos coming from this documentary crew that we've shown you. Uh, Stone is now threatened to file a $25 million lawsuit against the filmmakers of that. Um, the right wing loves suing people, but 10 times as much they love threatening to sue people and then not actually doing it. Remember Herschel Walker was going to sue I guess like the woman or the Daily Beast sure. about the abortion thing, but then oddly, oddly enough, decided not to do it. It's weird how that always works out. But anyway, he doesn't like uh, his actual words that he was super thrilled to say on camera at the time, coming out now, considering how bad it makes him look. Yeah, I want to say two more things about the pardon because um, it is two more. Like, think about how interesting this is. Roger Stone says to Jared Kushner and Donald Trump, "Oh, you didn't give me a pardon for my crimes? Well, you better not come down to Miami. I might kill you." Not really the best way to ask for a pardon, <laughs> okay? <laughs> not the best way to convince people that you're not a criminal. But of course, they are all, they're all criminals. They all know already that they're criminals. Yep. The question is who's handing out get out of jail free cards, yep. right? Okay, and then the second part of it is, look at how worried he was that they were gonna convict him and send him to prison over what he did on January 6th in organizing a coup against America. He was really, really worried. Yeah, freaked and out. I might have to withdraw my earlier statement that he's one of the few non-idiots. You thought the Democrats were gonna hold you accountable? <laughs> it's been two years they finally subpoenaed Donald Trump, right? Like they barely, barely got to it. I haven't even heard a word about Roger Stone, mm -hmm. right? You thought these feckless loser Democrats were gonna hold any of you accountable? That's funny, that's really funny. It turns out they way overestimate the Democrats too. 100%. Okay, uh, we got a couple more things to talk about, but one more break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Back on TYT, Jank and John with you guys on a fun Friday. You guys ready for this, but not just us. Juan Morales, Brian Benny, Spunky the Dragon, Laura Gully, Matthew Petronovich, and Dana B all just became members. Damn. Damn. It's a good day to become a member, man. I'm giving away $100 like crazy. Somebody call me Oprah in here. It's a little bit, I'm not saying. I mean, best talk show host in the country. I'm not saying, I haven't said a word. <laughs> Did I win Best Webby for the entire planet? I, I haven't said it. They said it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, yeah, go is that ahead. A, is that an award for the whole planet? Okay, okay. Yeah, best um, web host, yeah. Anyway, by the way, if you're getting a little bit jealous about the Blue Apron thing, uh, look under your chair. There's nothing under there. No, sorry, I didn't come to your can house. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> that would be freaky. Yeah. Anyway. TYT has snuck into all of your houses. Anyway, okay. uh, we'll work on that for next time. Okay, uh, let's have, uh, I guess, a little bit of fun starting with this. The entire leadership of the so-called progressive movement is that. They're totally and utterly corrupt. Is anyone on the left pointing this out? Has Cenk Uyghur, Uyghur said a word about it? The so-called radicals at Chapo Trap House?
Okay, so that is uh, Tucker Carlson who wants to take a dig at Jenk and uh, clearly does know how his name is pronounced. But he also knows that he's supposed to pretend that he can't pronounce most people's names to appeal to his racist audience. So he came up with an alternate way to do it. And we're gonna get to what he's talking about there. But to understand why he started this whole monologue, we need to backtrack just a little bit and take a look at what happened at a recent AOC town hall. Look at this. None of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are such war hawks. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you, and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. That's what you've become. You are the establishment, and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Okay, so those were uh, two Tulsi Gabbard supporters who I believe are constituents of AOC who don't like her votes to uh, you know, fund the defense of Ukraine and, and have a particular position on nuclear war that I don't think is actually reflective of anything that she's ever said and done. But they're of course free to believe literally whatever they want. More importantly for Tucker Carlson, this is an opportunity for him. Um, you can have legitimate views of AOC or anyone. For Tucker Carlson, he wants to destroy the left. He does not want progressives to have any power or any influence whatsoever. And so when he saw this, he just jumps in it. It's an opportunity for him to uh, to attack AOC and anyone else affiliated with AOC. We're gonna get to more of what he had to say. But of course, since he did name check you, Jank, what do you think? Okay, I'm gonna get to my response to Tucker in a second. I just wanna interrupt to say those two guys are total and complete frauds. Okay, I don't know that they live in that district at all. They're definitely not Democrats and they're definitely not progressives. Total, utter frauds, Republicans, we have to prove for it. Uh, I believed in you, he well, said, total, utter liar. We're gonna prove that he's a liar. So yeah, so one of them apparently has said in social media that he voted for Trump twice. That guy, but, the guy who said, I yeah, believe yeah, no, 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 in no, you. I get that. My, my <laughs> point would be, um, I, I don't, like, it's two people at a town hall. I, I don't particularly care what any random person at a town hall believes about politics. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not gonna litigate it. I'm gonna litigate it. Sure. No, no, but I'm not, okay. look, they're two rando trolls or what, whoever they are, right? They're not important. What's driving me crazy is people who are like, oh, the P P progressive peace activists are mad at AOC. Well, why don't you just write their propaganda for them? Mm -hmm. That was the whole point of trolling her was so that idiots would call them progressive peace activists. They're just Republicans, they're like, Tulsi Gabbard's the best. We're gonna get to back to that in a second too. She should leave the Democratic Party like her. Why don't you renounce the Democratic Party? I am a progressive. Wink. Get that out of here. Yeah. Okay. So the, the only reason I say it is it's impossible for me to know how genuine. Like I, I obviously don't agree with them. Obviously, I don't think that AOC wants a nuclear war. I don't. I don't get where that comes from. But but what they say is not nearly as important as the framing that comes out of it that people like Tucker Carlson and Jesse Waters. I mean, every white right wing media figure is jumping on this because their goal is for, especially going into 2024, there to be no progressives that have any chance of taking over the Democratic Party. That is, that is their goal. What any particular activist goal is, I have no idea. But the right wing does not want there to be a progressive alternative to either Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or also importantly, for us as leftists, they don't want there to be any progressives that have any support that can stand up to a Kamala Harris, to a Buttigieg, to anything like that. Because while the right wing would prefer to have a Ron DeSantis or a Donald Trump, if it's going to come down to an AOC or a Kamala Harris, they're of course going to go for the establishment more moderate Democrat. And so it's sort of our duty to make sure that people understand exactly what these progressives are. Criticize them. I mean, I know you 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 feel very free to criticize even AOC <laughs> and all that, but it has to be based in fact and reality. And Tucker Carlson and all of them have no interest in that whatsoever. Yeah, no, I've been furious at progressives, and I did a video called "I'm Burning All My Bridges" about Justice Democrats who I helped to get elected because they wouldn't fight back in a critical time 
when we during the beginning part of the Biden administration and throughout a lot of it, right? There's tons and tons of legitimate critique of policy and strategy. And have you ever heard me on Jayapal? And she's theoretically the leader of the Progressive Caucus, and she's furious with me. So there's that we're not talking about legitimate criticism of progressives. And within the progressives, there's plenty of disagreements on actual policy as well. Yeah. No, I'm talking about frauds. Here, I'll show you graphic one, Jose Vega. So this is one of the guys. Here's his tweet. Who's blaming the president? I voted for Trump twice. Pompeo needs to go before he starts a war with Iran. Trump's the one who got us out of the Iran deal and was going to start threatening. It basically almost got us into World War III. But they're trying to get you to believe that Trump is for peace and well, AOC is for war. And importantly, Trump so. kept us in the wars, whereas Biden got us out of Afghanistan. Trump dramatically um, uh, increased the number and severity of the drone strikes during his time. So we're gonna go back to Tucker, but guys, the reason I keep emphasizing that is because this is this is coordinated. They, These two right wing trolls go in to start this thing, they are taping, right? And then immediately Tucker and Jesse Waters and Jimmy Dore and all those guys are on it. And they're like, oh, boom, right. Oh, yes, oh, progressive activists, peace activists. Oh, my God, she's the AOC is not progressive. Later, I'm going to tell you why they're attacking progressives because that's super important. But keep going. Interesting. Um, yeah, well, we wanted to get into more of what Tucker Carlson uh, had to say, particularly about you. So let's jump into that next clip. Okay, so those are actual progressives. Now, there's no doubt that on virtually any other issue, we wouldn't agree with them. Don't know what their beliefs are, probably don't intersect with ours. But on this specific issue, which does matter, they're absolutely right. Sandy Cortez is not a radical, she's not a progressive, she's a neocon. <laughs> so, just to be clear, in the same way that he had to pretend that he couldn't pronounce your name, he calls her Sandy because, in addition to having to reassure his audience on a nightly basis that he's a racist, he also has to reassure them that he's a misogynist as well. And if you are an act, if you're an actual leftist who actually is anti-war and all that, you really need to understand, and I'm sure the vast, vast majority of you do, that Tucker Carlson doesn't care about. Any of that. Jesse Waters doesn't care about any of that. They're not interested in cutting the military budget or anything like that. So yeah. let's just like the, the idea that Tucker Carlson is just calling balls and strikes when it comes to <laughs> progressives and everything. He doesn't have like an agenda or anything. Like let, let's just be clear about who Tucker Carlson is. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, he, why do we keep saying he's uh, pretending to uh, mispronounce my name? Because we had an hour long debate at Politicon. And what you might not know is, we had uh, it was kind of delayed, and we had we talked for half an hour uh, before that behind the scenes, and then we talked uh, afterwards as well. He's and he pronounced my name perfectly well in all of those instances, so he knows he's doing it on purpose mm -hmm. to be like, ha ha, he's a foreigner. Yeah, that's all right. It is. It's obvious. And so that's that's why we're saying it. Uh, otherwise, my name is super easy to mispronounce, um, but not in his case because he knows it for a fact. And then she, they call AOC a neocon, hilarious, right? But remember the two guys who are progressives. How funny was that? Uh, the guy's like, I voted for Trump twice. I'm so proud of it. And he's like, No, these are progressives. I don't agree with. <laughs> okay, but then they were they're all backing Tulsi because she's for peace. Is she? Because she was totally in favor of the drone strikes all across the world. She was totally in favor of torture. Even back before she started pretending to be a progressive, she had all those positions. She's been in favor of every single war against, coincidentally, Muslims. Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh, Putin started a war? Yeah, I'm against the Ukrainians fighting back. I'm definitely against the Ukrainians sure. fighting back. But she was also in favor of Russia starting the, what they did in Syria. Right, she was in favor of Assad. He's the one that started the civil war in the first place. Well, not to be fair, he didn't start the civil war. Correction, right? It was a civil war against him, but he did massive atrocities. I mean, why randomly go and support Assad? She went and met with them, right? I have no she idea. supported every Russian war, every war against Muslims, and they're like, she's the one for peace. Okay, <laughs> every part of this is fraudulent. That's the important part. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and by the way, you can say that she's against American intervention, which might be generally true. No, but that's she's not for drone strikes. No, all no, no I get the that. World. I'm saying like for, she's against specifically long-term occupying nation building. I guess she's not against. I don't the, believe that either. But I hear you. Sure, sure. But but even like if you say I don't want arms to go to Ukraine, I don't want money to be spent on it. You can say that you're against intervention. 
But that's not pro peace because peace is not the result. The devastating loss of massive numbers of civilians is the result of that. Ukraine being conquered, people being killed, shipped off to Russia, raped, thrown into mass graves. That's not peace. You can say that you're against intervention, but there's no peace here. Let's just be clear about that for Tulsi Gabbard or whoever. Yeah, and one more thing about that. So I hear Tulsi and Tucker and Jimmy Dore all say, like, oh, we're for against the war. That's why we should not help Ukraine. Do not help the Ukrainians. But I've never heard them say, "Oh, we're also, of course, against Putin, that monster that started this war." Well, if you're against war, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you lead with that? Wouldn't you reiterate that all the time? Wouldn't you say it once? Wouldn't you say, "Oh, Putin's a monster. He murdered all those civilians. Started an imperialistic, aggressive war. What a horrible, horrible person, a tyrant." But God damn it, we don't want to make the war worse. So hey, listen, we shouldn't do this kind of rhetoric. We shouldn't do that kind of funding. I say, okay, yeah. well, then you have a legitimate opinion. I don't agree, might not agree with how we do the funding. And there's a ton of nuance there, right? But okay, I, I respect that. Yeah. No, no, never, never, never. So go ahead, Tulsi Gabbard, go ahead. I dare you to say that Putin's a monster who started this war. She'll never say it because she works for him. <laughs> so that guys, everything about this is fraudulent, fraudulent. So well, you can say, hey, that's hyperbole that she works for him, I guess, okay? But she certainly acts like it because she's like, I can't believe America is doing this. America's doing what, you dumbass? He's the one that started the war. He started the war, you have no criticism for him. Guys, please, look, they're tired. So I'll just get to this right now. Why are they going after progressives? That's Think about it, guys, it's so weird, we're out of power. It's not like Bernie's president, it's not like AOC's the Speaker of the House. We, we get crushed on a regular basis by corporate media. We get attacked by conservative Democrats nonstop. Why are they going after us? I don't mind, I, don't, I love the fight, but it's weird, right? So there's two reasons why. Number one, they're trying to pick off because the elections are decided a lot of times by tiny margins, certainly under five points. So you got really close to races that might be happening in Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, Nevada, etc. Right? They're just trying to pick off the lowest IQ people on the left, the ones that will believe that Donald Trump is a peaceful, honest, decent person, and that Trump is more progressive than AOC. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have to be the bottom of the barrel IQ to believe that. But they think, yeah, I think we got maybe two to five percent of progressives we can get on that. You know, that I means some people listen to Jimmy Dore. I think. We might be able to find these elusive bottom of the barrel IQ people and get them to vote for Republicans who will start more wars. Who are the most corrupt people on earth? <laughs> because we think that progressives are suckers. You're gonna let them treat you like a sucker that believe that Tucker Carlson and Donald Trump are more for peace than AOC and Bernie Sanders? I mean, you'd, you'd have to lose your mind to believe that. The second reason is, because, and then Tucker's a long term thinker, and I've never called him dumb. We've talked about that a lot. Who's the only one that could actually beat a Republican in 2024? They, they're already thinking way past Biden. Biden's hopeless. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris is hopeless. They already beat those two up. Only a progressive, because they would be populist, could beat a Republican in 2024. They're like, oh, please give us, give us Pete Buttigieg, please. Give us Biden when he's 98, please, please. Progressive, oh, no, 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 let's go ambush them now. Yeah. I mean, that is thinking ahead, so credit where credit is due. Because that a weirdo attack on progressives makes no sense otherwise. He's wasting Fox News airtime not attacking Biden and Pelosi, mm -hmm. but going after people who have no power at all? No, that's long term strategy. 100%. Uh, I know we have this video of you. I know that we are over, but it also directly contradicts what he's saying. Yeah, Do you want okay, to go to that? yeah, real okay, quick. So the, the claims that Tucker's making specifically, and, and again, to your point, he's not just attacking AOC. Why is he attacking leftist media? Come on, it's so weird because he doesn't want there to be movement going into 2024. Anyway, the claim he's making is that people like Cenk or I guess me or whoever, uh, all we want is war. We want nuclear war. I just want, I want to live out Fallout 4 or something. So why aren't we criticizing any of the money or the spending or whatever? Well, here's a little mashup of Cenk and Anna doing exactly that. Biden is planning on soliciting Congress for tens of billions of dollars in additional 
funding for Ukraine. The money would go toward, of course, military weaponry, also humanitarian aid. But what this reveals is that the government seems to have a bipartisan effort to easily appropriate money for any type of defense spending, any type of war related effort. And this is a perfect example of that. Look, we love Ukraine, we love that they're fighting back. What Russia did was horrific. So. But whenever it's bankers or defense industry, it gets approved right away. We've Child tax funds. credit, paid family leave. You want to take paid family leave? Hell no. Oh, how are we going to pay for that? That's for the average American. They didn't bribe any politicians at all. Last word goes to one of our members, Dragon with the Girl Tattoo said, I kind of doubt Boeing and Raytheon care where the weapons go after they get their money. So of course that's true. There's a caveat to that. If the weapons do end up in the wrong hands, that paves the way for them to send more weapons in whatever future war we have to deal with as a result of some dangerous militia having you know, these dangerous weapons. That's exactly what I was yes. gonna say. Mm, so Tucker Carlson said, "Oh, why hasn't Jake Uger spoken out against the, all this money to go into the defense contractors, uh, except that I did. Yeah. So, uh, oh wow, Tucker Carlson lying. Who could have guessed that? But I'm gonna leave on Tulsi Gabbard because this is their, they they're all saying, oh my God, Tulsi is like the queen of the left, and she's the real leftist, and and AOC is too conservative, and neocon, and neocon, right? So uh, Walker Walker Bragman tweet here about uh, Army General Don Boldick. He's running in New Hampshire, okay, for a very important seat, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard's decided to endorse him. Whoa, a Republican, a Trumpy Republican. Well, maybe he's a reasonable guy. Well, let's find out. As Bragman points out, Bolduc doesn't think Medicare negotiating drug prices is a good thing. He's a corporatist. He doesn't, you know, Jimmy's like one thing is, oh, I care about Medicare for all. That's why I'm supporting Tulsi Gabbard. She's supporting a person who says, no, the government should not negotiate drug prices. They should just let the drug companies pick any price they like. So they could kill you with how high their prices are. Mm-hmm. She's actively campaigning for that monster, okay? But there's a lot more, and and wants to end direct election of senators. Cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Uh, he opposes legal abortion, of course he does. But Tulsi's leftist, hilarious, has promoted Trump's big lie and suggested that COVID jabs are installing microchips for Bill Gates. That's the kind of lunatic right winger, corporatist. That Tulsi Gabbard is campaigning for now. So, if you hear someone telling you that Tulsi Gabbard's the real leftist, you, you know you're talking to a troll or one of the dumbest people alive. Okay, but to be fair to them, and that's why I read it, maybe they don't know it. But now you know it. Now you know it for sure. So, if there was any of you out there that were genuine left at all, if there's a single leftist still listening to Jimmy Dore and Tucker Carlson, etc., just understand. No, they're feeding you a bag of lies and they're tricking you into supporting the worst corporatist hawk right wingers you could possibly imagine. Go check out Baldick's record, check out to see if Tulsi has endorsed them. You can look at it for yourself. She's supporting right wing monsters pretending that AOC is a neocon. So if you fall for that trick after this, I can't help you past that. Go get counseling. All right. Uh, We gotta go, John, thank you, everybody check out the damage report. And we'll be back with another great hour. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.